the one thing you can certainly say about these elections is that they are free and fair. If there's anything that nobody can really dispute, is that um, we don't know who will win in the third week of April, because we're assuming it's going to go to a second round. Um, and therefore, um, Ukraine is, is very different to practically the, all the entire former USSR, apart from a few countries like the three Baltic states and, and Georgia. Um, the the debates going on between people in the Ukrainian diaspora, inside Ukraine, in Western Western articles and blogs, um, everybody's debating who's in the lead, whether the opinion polls can be believed. So I think that's a positive sign for Ukraine, um, and certainly um, a sign that um, uh, it really is a free and fair election. The one. Uh, recent scandal this week, which is rather incredible, but not surprising on the part of the OSCE, the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe, is that they invited Russians to be also observers in the elections, which of course raised a, an, an outcry, both from me on social media, from many other people, um, and uh, the, Ukraine, the Ukrainian foreign ministry is, is going to deny them access, and rightly so. Um, it's not surprising from the OSCE, which has also always pandered to the Russians, um, but this has now become more of a joke. This has actually become rather ludicrous, the idea that you would invite a country to send observers that's annexed part of your territory and is continuing military operations against you, um, and undertaking a host, whole host of other activities, such as assassinations in the center of Kiev. So rightly, and congratulations to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Ukraine, saying we will not accept any Russian uh, observers. Um, on the question of, um, of candidates, I don't think that much has changed, although there has been some kind of reshuffling of the pack, as it were. Um, the main candidates have remained, and they've remained pretty much the same in the last six months. Um, I've always thought that the second round would be Yulia Tymoshenko, Petro Poroshenko. I, I don't really change my viewpoint here. Um, I mean, they people have talked about Zelensky going through to the, the comedian who works on um, Oligarch Kolomoisky's One Plus One channel going to the second round. I somehow doubt it. Um, for a whole host of reasons, don't mix the two things up, what people do in opinion polls and what people do on election day. They're very, very different. Opinion polls don't have any consequences, elections do. And secondly, uh, many people who like Zelensky are young people, and they tend to, like in Western democracies as well, they tend not to come out to vote in such large numbers. Um, which is one of the reasons, by the way, that uh, Brexit um, won is because young people didn't come out to, to in the referendum. So I don't think Zelensky's got much of a chance. Opinion polls, um, at when, when they ask Ukrainian voters who do they think is going to be elected, not who will they vote for, but who do they think will be elected, only about 5% think that Zelensky will be elected. Again, a major region here is that Ukraine is not just holding an election. They're not just electing a president, they're electing a commander-in-chief. Um, that's very important. That has impacts upon how people will vote, particularly in the second round. And this will also negatively impact upon Yulia Tymoshenko um, for two reasons, really. Um, a, because she's a woman, and, and that's not something I particularly agree with, but Ukraine is very far behind in terms of uh, gender equality compared to the West. We've been at it a lot longer, let's be, let's be honest, than Ukraine. Ukraine's made great strides. It has 12% uh, of members of parliament are now women, but, you know, there's still work to do. Um, but would many men in Ukraine be happy that the a woman would be commander-in-chief? Uh, a woman would be directing the armed forces of Ukraine during a war. And that's a big question mark. Um, secondly, um, the uh, question, of course, of Yulia Tymoshenko's uh, uh, cozy, some, some would say, relationship with Russia, certainly unexplained gas deal from 2009. And around 30% of Ukrainians in opinion polls 
um, when asked who do they think Russia would like to see as the president of Ukraine, say first Yuri Boyko, second Rabinovich, and thirdly Yuli Tymoshenko. Thirty percent of Ukrainians think that. So she does have that Russia problem as a skeleton in her closet, whether she likes it or not, and whether it's true or not, it doesn't really matter. That's a perception that hangs around that she will strike some very bad peace deal with uh, with Russia, like she struck a very bad gas deal. Um, so um, I think that the, those factors are very important because, again, we're uh, Ukrainians are electing a commander in chief, and and this war. As Ukrainians believe, this war is going to last a long time. It's going to at least last until the next presidential election cycle, because Putin's in power till 2024, which is when Ukraine has its next set of elections after this year. Um, and therefore, the war is going to go on. Military aggression is going to go on as long as this next parliament and presidential term will be around till 2024. And let's be honest, Putin is president for life, is going to go on a lot longer than that. So, But the main candidates, um, the um, Zelensky has been able to pick up votes because he hasn't said anything. That's the other factor that we have to take into account. You know, I mean, he had a meeting a week ago with EU uh, diplomats, which was a disaster, um, because they asked him questions about important um, issues, including the war, Russia, and he just didn't have any answers. I mean, you know, he, he's a comedian, he's a clown. Um, I know we live in an age of 24-hour news, social media, so everybody's a political expert. My field is full of experts who read the New York Times once a day, and they're big experts. Um, it's not a field, um, you know, that, that can be same said about my wife, who's a chemist. Not everybody's an expert in chemistry, but everybody's an expert in politics today. Um, well. Um, you know, I'm looking forward to the election debates in Ukraine because Zelensky will come across as a complete jerk. I mean, you know, and the, and I think that will knock off a lot of votes. Also, um, there have been scandals surrounding his business links to Russia, and also the fact in 2017 he received a massive financial grant from the Russian government. Well, you know, again, not very, not very good news. So I, I, I'm, I've always been a bit skeptical about his ratings, unlike many people who take him quite seriously. Um, and they take him quite seriously for why? Because, well, they say, well, in Italy, a comedian did very well. He set up the Five Star Movement and he became second in the last Italian elections. I think it's a very different situation. Um, and Italy is not at war, of course, as well. Um, so I, th I think it, we're, we're talking about apples and oranges, not about the, two, the same thing. The, um, uh, so if we have, um, as I believe, the second round to Tymoshenko, Poroshenko, the big battle is also for the third place. Third place is important. Why? Because if you come third um, and think of the Ukraine's past, in 1999, Yevhen Marchuk came third and he was the kingmaker and he supported Kuchma in the second round. Um, in, um, in 2010, um, Sergei Tehipko came third. And Yulia Tymoshenko really desperately wanted him to back her, because she only lost, um, you know, she didn't lose by a huge amount in the second, in the first round. But Tehipko stupidly backed Yanukovych, he was swallowed up by Yanukovych, in fact, his party was eaten alive by party regions, it merged. Um, and Yanukovych won the second round, but only by 3%. So, you know, if Tehipko had gone the other way, maybe you, Tymoshenko would have won 2010. So the third position is important, and, and I think that third position is up for grabs. Originally, I thought it would be Anatoly Gritsenko, but, you know, he's such an old fixture um, of, is, is, in some ways, he's even more of an old fixture than Timoshenko or, or others, because he kind of is in the background, he's never in parliament, because his political force, civic initiative, has never got into parliament. Um, so he sort of hangs around in the back because his wife is the editor of Zerkola uh, Tezhnya, the influential weekly newspaper, or used to be a more influential weekly newspaper. I don't think as much now. Um, and then he, then he pops up in elections, <laughs> like a bad penny. Um, and, you know, I'm sure when he loses this year, he'll pop up again in 2024. This is his third attempt, like Timoshenko's. Um, but I, he hasn't got the charisma. Um, he just hasn't got the um, 
the policies. Um, he's very difficult to get on with. Originally, he was supposed to be aligning as a as a single candidate with Andrei Sadove, the mayor of Lviv. That didn't happen. They fell out, had a big argument. So Sadove is running himself. So I, I don't know whether Gretzenko will make it to the third third position. Um, his people were recently, just a few week, few about a week ago in Washington, Gritsenko's people, and um, they they were they were saying that they believe Poroshenko will win the second round, but that Gritsenko will not endorse if he comes third, uh, Poroshenko. So we'll see third third position. Um, the other potential third position is um, uh, maybe Yuri Boyko, but again I somehow doubt it. Um, Yuri Boyko, the pro-Russian candidate, or the most popular of three pro-Russian candidates, um, uh, would have definitely become come third um, if the pro-Russian camp had, 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 had originally planned had a, had a united candidate. They didn't. They fell out. They split in um, the opposition bloc. Split in, in November. And so today they have three candidates, uh, Alexander Vilkul, Yevhen Murayev, and um, Yuri Boyko. Uh, Yuri Boyko is the most popular of the three, but that means that that could push him down to fourth or fifth place. So it could be Zelensky coming in, third, 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 third place. That which would be rather amusing because who would Zelensky back um, in the second round? Um, I mean, let's not... Forget Zelensky is a a, cl a clone. He's a clown, but he's also a clone. He's a clone of of, of oligarch Kolomoisky. And why is Kolomoisky funding this candidate? Well, because Kolomoisky is a very angry man. Where he's very angry at Poroshenko. Poroshenko took away his two main illicit sources of money. One was Privat Bank, through which he laundered a huge amount of money. I mean. About half of Ukraine's banks have been closed down because they were just money laundering machines, and Privat Bank was the largest, um, and that was nationalized at the end of 2016. Uh, and the second was uh, Kolomoisky's control over the state oil refining company, Ukrnafta, which was again taken back by the Ukrainian state because uh, uh, Kolomoisky's people were in charge, they were the directors of that state company. So he was creaming money off that as well. So those two um, illicit sources of money were taken away, so hence Por uh, Kolomoisky is very angry at, um, at uh, Poroshenko and he's funding three candidates. Zelensky the clown, Timoshenko, um, and the third one is, is somebody who is not a popular candidate called Shevchenko, who was the leader of this fake nationalist party called Ukrop, Ukrainian word for Dil. Um, and there are quite a few of these fake nationalist parties. So, we'll, so the third position is still open. And the sad figure, I think, in this election is Andrei Sadove, because he's obviously a very successful uh, mayor of Lviv. Lviv has really taken off. I mean, if anybody who's visited Lviv in the last few years will, 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 will see that. Um, but he's not a politician. He hasn't shown himself to be a politician. You, you can't just be the mayor of Lviv and then suddenly, a few, few months before the elections, jump into politics and try to run, a new, run your party and run an election campaign. And he just hasn't sort of mobilized himself. And that, I think, is because he's, he's neglected his own political party, some of homage, self-reliance, which has kind of declined in or stagnated, as it were, in the last few years. I mean, one reason being is that Ukrainians don't like people who are hypocrites. I mean, when the Ukrainian parliament was elected five years ago, there were five parties in the so-called pro-European majority coalition. And um, two of those have remained, Poroshenko bloc and Narodny Front, popular front of Arseniy Yatsenyuk, the former prime minister. Um, two of them um, have left. And, and that's Samo Pomich, Sadovay's party, and Timoshenko. So they're not in opposition, but they're not also in, in the coalition. So there's some sort of constructive opposition. And then, of course, you've got the fifth party, which is another fake nationalist party, the radical party, Oleg Lyashko, uh, funded by Rinet Akhmetov. Uh, Ukraine politics never ceases to amaze. Um, so uh, I don't, you know, people have taken it 
uh, take uh, being critically disposed to those parties who don't want to be in the coalition but don't want to don't have the guts to go into opposition either they want to sort of be very in some ways typically ukrainian they want to have the their cake and eat it be on both both sides when you know you needed to have votes in parliament and some of did did vote more with uh, Narodny Front and the Poroshenko bloc than the others. Timoshenko's, um, um, I think, uh, her popularity, what's changed in the last month or so is her popularity has stagnated. So um, different opinion polls obviously give different, um, different uh, results. One reason is you have to always look at two questions. They're different. One question is, who do you who do you vote for in um, in the elections? And then the other question is who will will you come to the elections and who will you then vote for? They're very different questions and they usually give different answers. Um, Timoshenko was always in the lead until about January, then January December. What happened then was Poroshenko crept up. Um, he went up from about third, sometimes fourth place, up to second place. Um, that's obviously the effect of, for example, the Tomos, the, the granting of autocephaly, independence for the Ukrainian church, the, the new Orthodox Church of Ukraine, that had an impact upon him. Other people say it's even also the Zelensky effect. What does that mean? Is that um, Zelensky, the threat of Zelensky, has pushed many disillusioned Poroshenko voters to come back to Poroshenko, because they say, we can't have this idiot in charge of Ukraine. So we have to back Poroshenko regardless. Uh, Timoshenko's position, therefore, has got weaker. She must be actually a very uh, ang an angry person, and, and you can see that in her recent rhetoric. Um, and that's because she began the election campaign first, back in June of last year. She's put the most money in. Uh, you see her billboards everywhere. Um, and yet it hasn't really given her a massive boost or a massive springboard. Um, she should be... I think she would have thought, I'm sure she thinks she should have been now at 30% or so, which is only a sort of 17, 20%. Not that much more than the others, you know, I mean, maybe 4% more than Poroshenko. So she hasn't actually done that big jump. Um, and that's um, for all sorts of reasons. Um, uh, and still a lot of people are concerned that she... Um, um, you can't trust her. That's a major factor with her. Um, Vox Ukraine think tank just released uh, their uh, latest analysis, which they do um, every six months, and they did it. They just released one for 2018. Who are the biggest liars in Ukrainian politics? <laughs> and and uh, guess who comes number one yet again? Yulia Tymoshenko. Um, secondly, uh, Boyko. Thirdly, uh, Rabinovich. Now, we know populists lie, they manipulate, they exaggerate, they, um, they, they skip. Trump does that all the time and is not the only one. So they, this is common to populists everywhere. Um, I think also what, what, I, what I believe has a similarity. One of the worst um, pieces of rhetoric that Hillary Clinton did in the US elections in 2016 and maybe uh, helped to tip the balance against her in the election campaign was when she called Donald Trump's voters deplorables, a basket of deplorables. It was a major mistake, especially because many of these uh, white working class voters had voted for Obama in 2012. And I think the, the equivalent here for Timoshenko is when she went on a rant uh, about a week ago against Ulana Supron. Um, who was a, an American Ukrainian, uh, married to a Canadian Ukrainian, Marco Sopron. Um, she's been the acting minister of health for quite a while, been doing a fantastic job in modernization of Ukraine's healthcare system, creating a kind of Canadian British style Ukrainian health service, and also cleaning out corruption, which of course angers a lot of people, right? Because you're treading on people's source of illicit income, like with Kolomoisky. And, um, and, and so um, a, court, a court was bribed to uh, claim that she's wrongly in that position because dual citizenship is not allowed in Ukraine. Um, I think that will be overturned, that court ruling. But Timoshenko went on a rant saying that um, 
these Amer we can't have these Americans coming in and and um, playing with Ukrainians or or playing with healthcare with Ukrainians, using Ukrainians as some kind of guinea pigs. Um, it was a ludicrous rant, ludicrous uh, claim. It was attacked everywhere on social media, Ukraine diaspora and otherwise. It was a kind of a xenophobic kind of rant. Um, but it's consistent with her very confused foreign policy. I mean, are you pro-Western or are you not pro-Western? I mean, are you pro-Western in the sense of, say, Viktor Yushchenko, Petro Poroshenko, or are you pro-Western in the sense of Lenin Kuchma, where you one, you know, one day you're pro-Western, the next day you're who knows what kind of Ukrainian isolationist? Um, because she has, she's been a major, major critic of IMF policy. She says the IMF is bringing genocide. Those, that's her word to Ukraine. Um, and at the same time, she said she's pro-EU. Well, you can't be both. Sorry, Timoshenko, you can't be both. You, um, the the EU, US, Canada, um, World Bank only provides financial assistance to Ukraine after the IMF have reached an agreement with Ukraine to provide financial assistance. So EU and North American financial support to Ukraine comes after the IMF. It's all interconnected. You can't separate the two, so, as she's trying to do. So I think that that confusion, the fact that she wasn't really um, very welcomed in Washington in December, when especially when she raised the, again, rather daft idea of bringing China into the negotiations for the Donbass. Why bring China in? China supports Russia on every question practically in the international world. Look at China's position on Venezuela. It's the exact opposite of the Western position. It's the opposite of the Ukrainian position. Ukraine's position is the same as uh, EU, America, and Canada, which is that we support Guaido as the legitimate leader of Venezuela. Russia and China support Maduro, the kleptocrat in charge. So why would you want to bring China in? So I think all of these contradictions are helping to implode the, the Timoshenko campaign and at least the very least stagnating it and which makes makes the play for others as it were um, there all this shows again that Ukraine has having a free election there's 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 no nobody knows who's going to win I don't know who's going to win and but nobody knows how it's going to play out we do usually find that people vote with their hearts in the first round they vote with their heads in the second round which is not surprising so therefore, you know, people can people feel it's not really a lost vote if I vote for Gritsenko or Sadove in the first round because in the second round they won't be there and I'll vote for somebody else. So so we'll see. I think that the second round will will be uh, Poroshenko, Timoshenko. Some people are saying it will be Poroshenko, Zelensky. Um, Poroshenko would then wipe the floor. I think if that was true, I don't think it will be. I think Timoshenko will get through. But um, it's going to be a stormy election campaign, and I'm very much looking forward to, if if my predictions are true, um, a televised debate between Poroshenko and Timoshenko. It is going to be better than fireworks night in Britain on the fifth of November. Um, it's going to be amazing, um, and I'm and I think Timoshenko will lose her rag, as we say in Britain. So. Um, we still have um, about a month and a half to go before election day, um, the end of March. Um, it's just a day after Brexit. <laughs> so those two days are pretty, uh, pretty big on my calendar. 30th of March is Brexit, 31st of March is the Ukrainian elections. Um, but I'm sure we'll come back to this question again in a few weeks' time. Thank you very much.